Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the frequency modulation. So broadly, there are two types of modulation, the amplitude modulation and angle modulation. Angle modulation is further divided into two types, the frequency modulation and phase modulation. And this angle modulation is non-linear modulation. Now in this video, I am going to give you a brief overview of the frequency modulation. So frequency modulation is the encoding of information in a carrier wave by varying the instantaneous frequency of the wave. So in this case, the information is in the frequency variations of the carrier. Now if you remember the amplitude modulation that we have previously discussed, in amplitude modulation, the information was in the amplitude variations of the carrier. Now in frequency modulation, the information is in the frequency variations of the carrier. In amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the carrier wave was varied with respect to the message signal. Now in this case, in FM, the frequency of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the message signal. Notice that when I said that with respect to message signal or in accordance to the message signal, I mean the amplitude of the message signal. So in this case, in frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal. Whereas the amplitude and the phase is going to remain constant. So this is the definition of frequency modulation. Now if you remember in case of the uh, amplitude modulation, where the amplitude of the carrier signal was uh, varied with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. So here is the phenomenon of the amplitude modulation. We have the message signal. This is also called the baseband signal or modulating signal. And this signal contains information. So this is the signal which contains information. Then we have a carrier signal which contains no information. Notice that the amplitude and the frequency of this carrier wave is constant. So this carrier wave has constant amplitude and constant frequency. And it has no in, uh, information. It is used to just carry this message signal. Now as a result we have the amplitude modulated signal where the amplitude of this carrier signal is varied with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. So we have positive as well as the negative variation. So this is my positive variation and this is my negative variation. So actually the positive amplitude and the negative amplitude used to carry with respect to the message signal. So this was the phenomena of the amplitude modulated signal. Now in frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier wave is varied with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. Again, we have the message signal or the baseband signal or modulating signal. And this signal contains information. And then we have the carrier signal. Again, the carrier signal has constant amplitude and has constant frequency. And this signal contains no information. And as a result, we have the frequency modulated signal where the frequency of the carrier is changed with respect to this amplitude of the message signal. Now if we can see this for this positive cycle, we have one frequency which is this portion. And then for the negative cycle, we have the other frequency which is this portion. And then again for the positive cycle, I have this frequency and then again for the negative cycle, I have this frequency. So the frequency of this signal is varied in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal. When the amplitude is positive, the frequency is this thing which is the high frequency. When the amplitude is negative, the frequency is this thing which is the lower frequency. Notice that when the, uh, the spacing is lower, the spacing between the, uh, these two uh, signals is lower, the frequency is high. Because we know that this is our time period, frequency is inversely related to time period. So this is actually our high frequency and this is actually our lower frequency. So in this case, the negative amplitude is represented by lower frequency and the positive amplitude is represented by high frequency. So in this way, we are varying the frequency of the carrier signal with respect to the amplitude of the message signal in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal. So in frequency modulation, the amount of change in the frequency of the carrier signal is determined by the amplitude of the message signal. Now let us assume that the carrier signal has frequency deviation of 3 kHz. In such a case, the, the carrier signal will move up and down by 3 kHz. 
Now, so let's suppose the resting frequency of this is equal to some value, whatever is the value. And suppose the amplitude modulation, the, uh, the frequency deviation, which is denoted by del f, here is the plus minus 3 kilohertz. So, it's, it means that this higher frequency is going to be equal to f naught plus 3 kilohertz, and this lower frequency is going to be equal to f naught minus 3 kilohertz. So in that case, the positive amplitude will be represented by f naught plus 3 kilohertz, and the negative amplitude will be represented by f naught minus 3 kilohertz. So let us assume that the carrier signal has a frequency deviation of 3 kilohertz, that is denoted by delta f. In such a case, the carrier signal will move up and down by 3 kilohertz, as I have illustrated in the previous slide. The resting frequency or center frequency of the transmitter is defined as the output signal with no modulating signal applied. It is actually a lot of frequency to the transmitter. So this frequency we can say that for example this is the frequency f naught. That is the frequency of the transmitter when no input signal is applied. This is the allotted frequency of the transmitter. Now this modulated signal, frequency modulated signal will move up and down by 3 kilohertz above this, above and below this frequency and this is called the frequency de deviation. So when the message signal is applied, the carrier signal deviates up and down from its resting frequency. And the change of the carrier frequency up and down is called frequency deviation that is denoted by delta f. Now the total frequency variation, the total variation of frequency from highest to lowest is called carrier swing. And this total variation or the carrier swing is actually two times the frequency deviation. Because we have one del f for the upper side and one del f for the lower side. So the total carrier swing that is the difference between highest frequency and the lowest frequency of variation will be 2 delta f. In FM broadcasting system, it has been internationally agreed to limit maximum frequency deviation of 75 megahertz on either side of the center frequency or the resting frequency. So internationally, it has been agreed to limit the frequency deviation to 75 megahertz. So the FM broadcasting, which is from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz in that case the frequency deviation has been internationally agreed to be limited to the 75 megahertz and the channel bandwidth in case of the fm broadcasting or we can say that the separation between adjacent uh, stations is 200 kilohertz so the channel bandwidth is actually 200 kilohertz which means 0 0.2 megahertz so this range is actually 20 megahertz. So if we are we are finding to number of channels, the number of channels is basically will be equal to 20 megahertz divided by the bandwidth of the channel, which is 0 0.2 megahertz. This comes out to be 100 channels. So the 100 channels can be allotted to a specific region or specific area because in communication or in FM broadcasting system also we use the cell splitting concept. We use the frequency reuse concept. So this 100 channel is allotted to the certain area and then this 100 channel is also allotted to another area which is at some distance away from this. So this was all about the frequency modulation. We will discuss the FM broadcasting system in greater detail in coming lectures. So this was all about the frequency modulation. Thank you.